Chair of the Committee of Technology. I want to welcome all of you to the Technology Committee hearing today in City Council. We are here today to conduct an oversight hearing on the Open Data Law, the 2018 Open Data Plan, and the several amendments to the Open Data Law that were passed by the committee within the past few years. New York City is widely recognized as the leader in the open data movement among local governments. This success shall be credited both to the underlying law itself as well as the dedication to its implementation and hard work that has been demonstrated by the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications and the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Today, the committee will discuss the implementation of open data laws, the challenges that have arisen, and ongoing issues, and the ways we can work together to solve them both administratively and legislatively. In addition, we will hear intro number 1137 sponsored by Council Member Adams, codifying the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, also known as MODA. I look forward to hearing from the panels today, and I'd like to thank the Technology Committee staff and our data team for putting together this hearing. With that said, I would like to recognize uh, the Technology Committee members and Council members. We have Council Member Adams, and the other ones are on their way. And our first panel is uh, Albert Weber from Do It, and and our newly arrived uh, uh, motor motor uh, motor uh, chief, uh, Kelly Jean. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. One second. One second. One moment. Yeah. I just need to swear you. Yeah. Um, do you, I want to ask you to raise your um, right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing by the truth in your testimony before the committee and respond honestly to council member questions? Thank you. You can start. Good afternoon, Chairman Ku and members of the Committee on Technology. My name is Kelly Jin, and uh, I serve as the Chief Analytics Officer here in the City of New York, as well as the Director of the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. I'm joined today by Adrian Schmoker, MODA's Director of Civic Engagement and uh, Strategy, as well as Albert Weber, Director of Open Data at the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, uh, do it as well as Donald Sunderland, uh, DOIT's Chief Data Officer and Deputy Commissioner for Data Management and Integration. We are here to discuss MODA and DOIT's work to facilitate citywide compliance with the city's open data law and achieve our vision for open data for all. Monday, October 15th, uh, was my first day as the city's new chief analytics officer. I am thrilled to step into this role and work alongside our agency and outside partners, many of whom are represented here today, uh, to continue the great work happening within the city regarding data analytics and open government. To provide a brief biography about myself, most recently, I served as a director focused on data-driven investments at the local government level, uh, at a national philanthropy, as a policy advisor to the U.S. Chief Technology Officer and Chief Data Scientist at the Obama White House, uh, and prior to that, as a founder and co-lead of the City of Boston's data analytics team. While I have just started, uh, I am preceded by the excellent work of the New York City open data team, city agencies, as well as the council, uh, whose efforts have really made New York City's open data program one of the best in the world. On behalf of the administration, 
I would really like to extend gratitude to this committee uh, for its ongoing and continued support of this important program. I would like to first begin by describing the structure of the city's open data initiative. MODA is the business owner of the program and our mission is really to make city data more accessible and actionable through public data, interagency data sharing, and advanced operational analytics. This work would not be possible without open data. Last month, we published the 2018 open data plan and the annual progress report on open data for all, uh, conveniently titled, uh, and also here, the New York City Data at Work, copies of which are here in the room uh, and also available to committee members as well. This, hi, hello. Uh, and this report really describes uh, how open data powers government efficiency and effectiveness at MODA as well as across city agencies. The data stories contained within highlight the many ways in which public data can and has improved outcomes for New Yorkers from prioritizing where inspectors root out tenant harassment with advanced analytics to coordinating a more efficient response from emergency service agencies to enabling minority and women owned businesses to have greater opportunities for city contracts. Our partners at Do It are the technical manager of the program, conducting the vital work of data publishing with city agencies, developing data set automations and maintaining the data sets digitally. Each week, the open data portal is vid visited by over 30,000 users, including students, researchers, entrepreneurs, nonprofit employees, who really use the data to conduct meaningful analysis and inform unique projects. These projects include the Open Sewer Atlas, a digital resource that pulls from data provided by the Department of Environmental Protection, by Do It, and 311 as well, to inform the work of water advocacy groups across the city. The development of community resources such as the Open Sewer Atlas would not be possible were it not for the hard work of the Do It Open Data team. The team ensures that the continued quality of the open data inventory, an important information service for New Yorkers and those who serve New Yorkers. Finally, the program would not be possible without the contributions of open data coordinators, also known as ODCs. They are who MODA and do its agency, uh, they are MODA and do its agency level liaisons. Open data coordinators are appointed by the head of their agency and are responsible for identifying eligible data sets across agency divisions, enabling the delivery of open data sets to the portal and addressing public feedback on their agency's data sets. Thanks to local law 251 from 2017, which this committee passed last year, every agency is required to have an open data coordinator. The success of open data really relies on the strength of the cohort of open data coordinators. To that end, MODA and Do It have made significant progress setting up ODCs for success. This past year, we have trained all ODCs on how to be more effective in the position in a mandatory day-long workshop hosted in partnership with Socrata, uh, with Beta NYC, uh, who I believe is represented here today, uh, Lauren Ellen McCann of Build With, the Sunlight Foundation, and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services. We also convened ODCs in person to describe, uh, to discuss requirements and share opportunities, and lastly, developed educational resources to assist ODCs in creating compliance and engagement strategies tailored to the unique data environments in their own agencies. We know that these efforts to build capacity are working because we recently surveyed open data coordinators for feedback on this year's annual compliance reporting process, who largely responded that they felt confident in their abilities to complete this year's compliance reporting requirements. MODA, Do It, and the ODCs have collaborated to add more than 2,100 data sets representing billions of rows of data to the open data portal. The NYC Data at Work report describes how several of these data sets are created and used. 
The largest data sets on the portal are taxi trip records, which account for hundreds of millions of rows of data annually and are used by the Taxi and Limousine Commission to create better proactive policy at the agency. Among the most accessed data sets on the platform are the Department of Buildings data set on job applications and permits, which have helped the agency improve how it processes information, and the DCAS's civil service data set, which is used by thousands of prospective civil servants to check the results of their civil service examinations. This year, 38 agencies have published more than 600 data sets ranging from street furniture location to records on licensed dogs to information on housing developments that receive financial assistance. In addition, more than 400 new data sets were identified for future release. Still, we do not measure success solely by the number of data sets that we publish. Usable data is well-documented data. Metadata is information that describes how data was collected and what each column in each data set represents. As such, metadata is the key to making data sets understandable to every New Yorker, which is the spirit of open data for all. More than 90% of data sets on the open data portal have data dictionaries, and Moda recently completed our Metadata for All initiative in partnership with the local library science community to develop a new standard and guide for creating best-in-class metadata. Starting in January, we will see improved metadata for the most used data sets on NYC Open Data, and all metadata for newly published data sets will be required to meet this standard. Since the announcement of Open Data for All in July 2015, the administration has been unrelenting in its efforts to put data in the hands of more New Yorkers. As noted in the 2015 NYC Open Data, is an invitation for anyone, anytime, anywhere to engage with New York City. This past year, we've engaged a record number of users, both online and in person. I would like to take this opportunity to outline a few use cases of open data and specifically highlight the Open Data for All initiative. First, Open Data Week 2018 showcased the value of open data as a community building and problem solving resource. This past March, 1,800 New Yorkers attended events during the second annual Open Data Week. More than 51 government, academic, cultural, and business partners produced over 30 events, including a data art exhibition, an open contracting treasure hunt, and a tour of a data exhibit at the Museum of the City of New York. I Wish I had gone to those. Students in Staten Island use data on school statistics to express the information about youth in foster care. Entrepreneurs learned how to use open data to build a business. Technologists and designers collaborated on creative solutions for the L train shutdown, which led to a current proposal for an L train collab, a program and a place to focus on data driven problem solving of issues related to the L train and sustainability impact as a result of the shutdown. Open Data Week showcased the breadth and the depth of open data users as well as those use cases. We expect to see even more unique ways public data is being used in Open Data Week 2019, which will be produced in close partnership with Beta NYC and is expected to, to take place in March. We will be launching a call for event organizers in early November, and we welcome the Committee on Technologies participation in Open Data Week 2018, uh, 2019, and we look forward to exploring ways to engage New Yorkers in your districts around open data. Additionally, we are pushing open data to be a tool to teach New Yorkers how their local government works. Three Learn About New York City events welcomed a combined 350 plus attendees to City Hall to hear how city officials from nine different agencies describe the operations behind the public data. The most recent event held in August placed the spotlight on transportation data from the city and limousine, uh, the Taxi and Limousine Commission, the Department of Transportation Citywide Mobility Survey, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services Fleet Management Operations, and the Department of Sanitation's Plow NYC program. 
We shared some of these stories and more in the Open Data for All progress report, which was accompanied by a video on the Open Data homepage showing the public data behind city operations that New Yorkers encounter every day. Dozens of examples of the way New Yorkers use open data can further be found on the Open Data website's new project gallery for which stories can be sourced, uh, were sourced from a contest held earlier this year. Winners were featured in our second marketing campaign using Link NYC kiosks. Finally, agencies are the key to scaling open data for all into a citywide data awareness effort. For the first time this year, we required agencies to go beyond publishing data and commit to engaging their communities with their data sets. Commitments include advertising an agency's open data sets on its website and social media channels, producing curricula for using its data, speaking about open data at public events or in schools, and writing blog posts. Moda is developing a tracker to help make sure that all 200 plus public commitments can be met by city agencies in the coming year. Local Law 11 of 2012, the original open data law, sunsets this year. Thanks to legislation the council passed last year, the program will continue into the future and will be more transparent than ever. Thanks to Local Law 251, we published a comprehensive inventory of all public data sets and the status of their compliance with relevant local laws. Additionally, a new compliance dashboard will be added to the open data website by the end of the year. We are also identifying additional ways to make governance of the open data program more transparent and participatory. We invited high school students to participate in an open data youth leadership council to generate ideas for bringing public data into their communities and schools and MODA continues to recruit youth to its leadership council, and we invite council members to please share this opportunity with your constituents. Before I close, I would like to address um, introduction 1137, which would codify MODA into the New York City Charter. MODA was founded by an executive order in 2013 and has been a leader in civic analytics in the five years since. We are excited by this opportunity to formalize MODA's role in the Charter and are eager to discuss ways in which the bill's language can better reflect the current practices uh, with the Council after this hearing. Uh, my colleague Albert Weber will highlight a few of those ways in which DOIT already works with MODA to achieve some of the specific responsibilities identified in the bill. I would like to thank the Committee on Technology for the opportunity to testify today. I would also like to thank the Mayor's Fund, New York City's Library Systems, the Metro Library Council, Civic Hall, Beta NYC, Reinvent Albany, Esri, our city agency partners, open data users, and all of our many community collaborators whose support truly makes this work possible. At this point, I will turn it over to Albert Weber who will discuss our progress on data publishing and achieving compliance with the open data law in more detail. Uh, before we do that, I want to announce we have Council Member Jaeger and Council Member Holden uh, arrive. Yeah, thank you. Do you affirm the tell the, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing by the truth in your testimony before the committee today and answer honestly to the council member questions? Yes, I do. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair, Chair Ku and members of the City Council Committee on Technology. My name is Albert Weber, and I'm the Director of Open Data for the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, also known as DOIT. With me are Donald Sunderland, do its Chief Data Officer and Deputy Commissioner for Data Management and Integration, Kelly Jin, Chief Analytics Officer for the City of New York and Director of the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, and Adrian Schmoker, MOTA's Director of Civic Engagement and Strategy. As Chief Analytics Officer Jin stated, Do It and MOTA collaborate closely to ensure the City's compliance with Local Law 11 of 2012, also known as the Open Data Law. Over the past several years, it has been a pleasure to work with the New York City Council Committee on Technology and advocates alike to make the open data law even more effective and impactful. 
We believe New York City's open data law is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, law of its kind in the country. We should all be extremely proud of all of the progress we have made together. Chair Ku, we look forward to continuing this work under your leadership and to hosting you for an open data training in your district next week. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, the open data law requires that all public data sets maintained by New York City agencies are made available through a single web portal. The open data portal, powered by our vendor Socrata, is maintained by my team at Doit. Just last year, we revamped the open data website to be as user friendly as possible. Today, the open data portal is home to over 2,100 data sets, including data sets, tables, and maps. City agencies and offices are responsible for identifying and making available all public data that their agency produces and are also required to annually submit an inventory of public data assets that they have not yet made public, along with the dates they intend to publish them. This inventory, along with other compliance metrics, was published on September 14th of this year as a part of the Open Data for All report. This is a pivotal year for the open data law as the original law required agencies to publish their public data by December 31st, 2018, which is in a few short months. This horizon was a great goal to move toward, but we believe a good deal of work remains. As CAO Jin stated in her testimony, the open data team has been working hard to continue to meaningfully engage open data coordinators throughout the year to deeply ingrain open data practices throughout agencies. New data is created each day, meaning that agencies are continuing to identify new data assets. In fact, on top of the 625 new data sets published within the last reporting period, agencies and offices identified 419 new data sets to be planned for future release. This is also the first reporting period since the passage of Local Law 251 of 2017, which in part uh, prescribed the disclosure of the status of all data sets, including the scheduled publication date, the actual date of publication, and the location of the data set, whether a data set is automated, and if not, if it can be, and other compliance provisions. To this end, we have published a data asset inventory and an open data plan tracker. Compiling this information in one place has given the open data team and the public a better view of agency compliance with data standards, timely publication, and updates to data sets. Over the past year, we have also dedicated ourselves to efforts that ensure that the 2,100 plus data sets are high quality and up to date. We archived or consolidated 97 data sets in order to improve how users search for and find the data that is useful for them without removing important historical data in the process. We have also taken extra measures to evaluate data sets for automation. Automation is important because it helps agencies quickly and frequently update dynamic data sets. The 311 service request data set is an example of an automated high value data set. Because new data is being created every day, this data set is automated daily without any specific action by 311 or do it. Just this year, we automated 38 data sets, bringing our total to approximately 250 automations. Furthermore, we found that 302 additional data sets are potential candidates for automation in the future. We will continue to work with agencies to identify feasible automations. We have also been steadily increasing compliance with other important provisions of the open data law. 2,000 data sets have data dictionaries, which help explain to users what columns and rows represent. This sub supplementary document provides context that would otherwise not be apparent within the data set. Additionally, 296 eligible data sets covered by the geospatial requirements of Local Law 108 of 2015 have been geocoded. In other words, data sets that contain addresses must also contain specific standard fields such as latitude, longitude, and council district, among others. It is our goal to get to 100% compliance on both of these requirements, and we have been actively working with agencies to reach that goal as new data sets are added. It is just as important to make sure that the data is understandable and usable as it is to simply disclose it. Before concluding, I'd like to briefly address um, introduction 1137, which would codify MODA in the New York City Charter. DOIT and MODA work closely together on the administration and implementation of the open data program, and we have found this to be an efficient and collaborative relationship that we will continue. 
Thus, we believe that Council Member Adams' bill is a laudable effort. However, there are some changes to the language we'd want to work on with the sponsor and the committee. First, Local Law 11 of 2012 gives certain responsibilities to do it in relation to the implementation of open data. And we want to ensure that that language is in the bill enshrines the practices we have adopted to fulfill that mandate. We also want to stress the importance of DOIT's responsibility for the city's technology assets. We are the entity responsible for building and maintaining the infrastructure for citywide data sharing. In fact, under Commissioner Saney's leadership, we are in the process of enhancing citywide data sharing offerings. Although Moda is the business owner of the technology, DOIT remains the technology owner and service provider. This dynamic is akin to many other technology services we provide to agencies across the city. The success of many technology services, including the Open Data Portal, has relied on these separate but collaborative roles. We look forward to working with the council to make the legislation reflect the current practices that make our partnership so successful. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Um, open data remains a priority of this administration, shining a bright light on our government and our city for all New Yorkers to see, and providing the tools to solve civic issues in creative ways. We thank our partners in the city council and in the civic technology community for their continued advocacy. This concludes our prepared testimony, and we look forward to answering your questions. Thank you for your testimony. Before we go to questions, uh, I would like to invite uh, Council Member Adams uh, to give her statement. Oh. Thank you very much, Chair Ku. Good afternoon, uh, Chairperson Ku and members of the Technology Committee, and thank you for today's hearing on my bill, Introduction 1137. This bill would indeed codify into the New York City Charter the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, or MODA. The Mayor's Office of Data Analytics is New York City's Civic Intelligence Center, allowing the city to aggregate and analyze data from across New York City agencies to more effectively address crime, public safety, and quality of life issues. The office uses analytic tools to prioritize risk more strategically, deliver services more efficiently, enforce laws more effectively, and increase transparency. The office's core functions include collaboration with the city agencies to implement data-driven solutions to city service delivery issues, building a citywide data platform to facilitate data sharing, oversight of citywide data projects, and implementation of the city's open, law, open data law. The objective information received from this office is a valuable tool for the New York City Council, and it helps us to be more robust and effective in our work. While the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics was created by Executive Order 306 under Mayor Bloomberg, we must ensure that this office survives successive mayoral administrations. I look forward to working with MODA and do it to fortify the bill's language and to make it as effective for all as possible. I thank you, Chairman Ku. I thank the committee for your time today, and I ask for your support of this important and very necessary legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, um, Council Member Adams. So uh, thank you all for your testimony. The committee, together with our data team, have reviewed the report and have uh, several questions. First of all, the report shows the hard work and dedication of the, of the city's open data team and efforts toward the increasing accessibility and government governmental transparency. We need to discuss what should be done to improve it. So my first question is, does the department organize any public events or outreach to educate general public about the open data, uh, in addition to the ones you mentioned in your testimony? Hi, my name is Adrian Schmoker. I'm the Director of Civic Engagement and Strategy for the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. And in response to your question, the answer is yes. Um, open data for all for us means making sure that the data is reliable, which is a lot of the work that Albert and his team over at Do It are ensuring through the continued growth of the automations pipeline, working with the public to answer public inquiries that come in. We get about 25 to 30 inquiries per week to the platform. 
making sure that open data is accessible is really important. There was mentioned the Metadata for All initiative. As a part of that, we had four community workshops over the summer in collaboration with local library groups in every borough. Um, we also have the new video that was mentioned in the testimony, various tutorials and additional content has been added to the website, making sure that the open data website is user friendly, ADA compliant are all things that have been a priority for us. We did user testing of the website again this summer to make sure that we're continuing to make sure that it's friendly for our users. And then lastly, making sure that uh, the platform and the data are discoverable is key. If nobody knows that open data exists, people aren't going to use it. Uh, so increasing marketing efforts. We had two marketing campaigns for the first time this year on Link NYC kiosks. The first one was estimated to reach close to 3 million New Yorkers, and we're still waiting for statistics on the last campaign. Um, and then Open Data Week and the Learn About New York City events were mentioned in the testimony, but I'm happy to provide more detail about those if you'd like. So how do you advertise uh, these events? Uh, how do you let people know about it? That's a great question. So on the Open Data website, on the Contact Us page, there's an opportunity for people to sign up for a mailing list. So we want to make sure people are opting in to our communications and giving us their information of their own free will. So we have a listserv of more than a 1,000 people at this point who have committed to hearing about different Open Data events. And so we send that information out via email. So pursuant to state law or uh, to the to Local Law 11 of 2012, the department shall implement an online forum to solicit uh, feedback from the public and encourage public discussion on open data sets availability on the web. Uh, there is a contact us uh, option on the open data page. Uh, what are other avenues that the public can take in order uh, to request data sets or leave a feedback? Do you understand my question? Um, I believe so. So yeah. the, the Contact Us page is a new implementation somewhat. It's been around for about 18 months. We decided to implement that after understanding that there was confusion um, from the public in understanding how to get in touch with the open data team. So we took that feedback to heart we developed this central place where the public could get in touch with the open data team to request data sets, as you mentioned, but also to report data errors, to submit data questions, to submit ideas for partnership. It's really our way of making sure that we're getting inquiries in a central place from the public so that we can be accountable to following up with those inquiries after we pass them along to agencies. Um, and as mentioned, we get about 25 to 30 inquiries on average per week. Okay. And, and during the 2016 hearing on open data, you noted that uh, over the next year, you will be implementing a new technology solution to take feedback for centralized uh, mechanism that allows for quicker responses and better tracking on our interaction with users. So what are you, where are you in this process? Yeah, so is this the same? Yeah. With the help desk tool implementation, we did procure a new technology. Uh, the, plat the software is called Screen Door. It's a product of a company called the Department of Better Technology, which was recently acquired by CityBase. That's the platform that we use for the, um, the help desk technology. Yeah. So uh, in the report, it appears that a number of data sets that shall be on the open data portal has yet to be published on the portal. Uh, what are the most common reasons uh, for the delay? Yeah, so identifying data and eventually publishing it to the portal, it, it generally varies per agencies. Um, a lot of times what we'll find is that as data sets were identified in the plan over the course of a number of years, sometimes you can find that there are changes in open data coordinators, changes in the priorities of the agencies, um, cleaning the data, structuring it to make sure it's in a user-friendly format. So, you know, we're looking for it to be open data for all. So we want to make sure that when we release this data, it's clean, that it's understandable. Um, so those are some of the reasons why data could be delayed. So, um if agencies are not compiling, 
what has been done to ensure compliance? If they're not complying, what, what, what can you do? So we work with um, more than 60 open data coordinators from agencies and then more than 40 open data coordinators from various initiatives, smaller commissions across the city. We've really made it a priority over the last two years to give the, this cohort of individuals across the city resources that they need to be successful in their roles. Now, if something is a little delayed or not on time, we'll get in touch with the open data coordinator, look to understand what's going on, and if necessary, we'll escalate communications to agency leadership. Okay. So what can be done to ensure compliance? You know the inter... Oh, you, you all said that, right? So only 38 data sets were automated on the report so that 302 data sets can be feasibly automated. So what types of data sets were automated? Um, there are a number of um, data sets that were automated. Um, things um, from the Department of Environmental Protection, um, things from the Business Integrity Commission, um, but I do want to speak a little bit about, you know, the numbers of the 38 automations. So those are the new data sets that we've automated over the last reporting period. But the technology team at Do It is also working on other um, automated data avenues, things like enhancing data sets, um, adding fields that the public is always asking for, um, geocoding data, and then also working on the technology infrastructure that's in place that's allowing us to um, automate data in a closer to real-time fashion. So while there were 38 automations, there is a lot of technology work being done behind the scenes that's, that's supporting more automation going forward. Mm. So what types of data sets cannot be automated and why? Um, data that's not in a machine-readable format. Um, of course, when it comes to open data, anything that contains personally identifiable information or sensitive information um, but it usually comes down to the structure of the data or where the data is stored. Okay. Um, geospatial references. Data is required by local law 108 of 2015. Could you identify the challenges that you or agencies face in complying with this requirement? Yeah, so when it comes to geocoding data, um, the success of geocoding, it really depends on the quality of the information that we're putting into the uh, geocoding system. Um, for the data that we've geocoded so far, um, the, process, the process can be labor intensive. Um, so what my team was working on in Do It was um, we identified the data sets that um, qualified under this law. What we had to do eventually was, for the ones that weren't automated, download those data sets run them through the geocoding tool. It sometimes gives you um, multiple outputs that we need to recombine and push back up. So the process can be a little bit labor intensive. Um, there's a certain amount of technology or technical skill that's needed. So um, Do It has taken on a lot of that work on behalf of agencies. Um, but the overall process of, of, of cleaning the data, having it prepared <coughs> to be geocoded is, is, is tends to be what can um, draw out the process. Okay. So uh, we received concerns about the size of a data set files for downloading. Uh, would, it, would it be possible to include the information about the file size before it's downloaded? Because I think if the file is too big, sometimes people don't realize it. And they, they click on it, and then it takes forever to download. So if you tell them beforehand like, how big this file is, they'll think about it, you know, they, whether they have enough time or, or they, they have enough uh, space to store the data. So I think that that's a, a very important piece of metadata that I believe we had some information about that on the primer page, but to your point, if people are not um, aware of that or not finding that information, that's what matters more, right? So continuing down the road of trying to make sure that the accompanying information about the data set is understood, that's something we'd like to learn more about from people that you're hearing who are having this issue, and we can work to find ways to make that more uh, noticeable on the platform. Okay. Um, 
the issue of privacy has been raised during our previous hearing. What does the department do in order to protect privacy of New York City residents in relation to the open data portal? With regards to open data, we, we lean heavily on our open data coordinators um, to coordinate within their agencies um, to ensure that personally identifiable information, that sensitive information is not included in the data set. Um, we lean on the agencies because no one understands their data as much as they do. Um, we do brief um, um, checking on our end, but we heavily rely on the agencies to ensure that that information doesn't make it to the portal. Thank you. Uh, we have a Council Member Holden, uh, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, thank you. Chair. Sure. Um, over the years, I, I don't know if you're going to answer this, but over the years, what agency has really been extremely slow to respond to releasing data? Data. I mean, I don't, I, I, I probably, I'm not going to get an answer on that, but I just wanted to ask it to hear, is there one particular agency that you'd like to see move a little faster? Um. Honestly. <laughs> Well, I would say that um, the open data program has been in operation for about eight years, and the law was passed six years ago. And to Albert's earlier point, there's turnover with who at the agency becomes an open data coordinator, and even within the leadership of that agency. So we've seen some agencies, even in the past year, who might have been a little bit slower pick up speed over the last few months as we've done proactive outreach to make sure that an open data coordinator who has the bandwidth to take on those responsibilities is appointed into that role, and then given the instruction and support to be successful in their role. Okay. And my second question, there are numerous non-existent website links all over NYC websites, uh, pages, or web pages. Could someone from Do It perform dead link uh, analysis to track down the correct uh, website URLs and notify the responsible parties uh, that their websites have dead links and update accordingly. I know that's a, you know, we, do we need more personnel? Is it, because there's a lot of dead links. Uh, for instance, um, uh, even on, uh, on the open data, about NYC open data webpage, they have two dead links out of three. In about, you know, it says uh, two out of the three links on that page, one in NYC digital and the other one is in code corps. It's it's uh, this this is what happens. You get um, you know a blank page is not available, and that's on your site. You know, so it's really you get this. I don't know if you can see the camera there. So, um, so you, there, there needs to be on your own site. There needs to be you know the data set. Somebody following up a little bit, especially about NYC data. I mean, what, do you have an answer for that? <laughs> I mean, we can we can definitely do an analysis on the open data um, website because we want to make sure that there that the data is accessible, searchable, and available. So, um, with regards to the open data portal, um, we will definitely work to ensure that there are no dead links. Some, on somebody just has to run through and just like right. use it, <laughs> you know, because there's a lot of inconsistency. It's like frustration. You say, oh, nothing happens, and I'm getting out of here, you know. So we need we need really somebody, you know, an intern just to <laughs> actually go through this thing and check it. I agree, uh, and, then, and then on our contact us page, we also have a section that's that's meant for uh, data questions and data errors. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of any dead links on the site right uh, now. I'll give you the links to you. Yeah, that would be, that would be I'll, great I'll, I'll hand it to you. Answers. Yeah, um, and you know, there's um, uh, is anyone? Here's another one for it on the open. Is anyone checking the agency open data sets? that should be released quarterly, month, monthly, annually, weekly, et cetera, or, you know, or, or, that, that, that's being done. Um, an example, DOT has a data set of weekly street resurfacing by borough, which has not been updated since 2014. So what's the purpose? You know? and so that's, we have to get after certain agencies and, and check them and, and make sure that you know, it's working. And you know, so you, you obviously will work on that uh, and check some agencies? Yeah, we, we will definitely coordinate with open data coordinators to make sure everything is updated in a timely fashion. That, that's also why we um, emphasize automation of data so much. Um, it makes it easier for everyone, and it makes the data, um, it, it gets the data where it needs to be um, quicker than we could manually. Um, so, so we will work with those open data coordinators and then also continue to emphasize automation. And, and you know, like I, I would guess you want to publicize your success work um, 
and your work. And, um, Twitter account at NYC Analytics. Uh, uh, um, there says it has been it's been stale for three years. And on your website, the last news and media posting was in 2015. Um, so the analytics is you know has nothing been done or new and exciting since 2015. You know, nothing to publicize. <laughs> I can say there have been plenty of very exciting things that have happened uh, since since 2015. This is definitely on uh, the top of my. But it's list. not. It's not being one, done. One, one of the top of my uh, top of my list items to look into. It's uh, a long time, but nothing team. nothing happening. Um, and just my last question, I guess, uh, can the existing data be uh, cleansed? For you know, like something as simple as coming up with a master file for 311 operators to use, so that they are consistent about what they type in. Uh, for instance, say, the, you know, like um, they type in an address, let's say 8,000 Cooper Avenue one day, and then 80-00 Cooper Ave, and then another day, the third one types in Avenue instead of AVE. So there, can we create a consistent uh, master, master file so that they'll save time? And I think it would be more accurate. Is that possible? Well, I believe what you're speaking to is the idea of data standards, and right. we have that for open data when it comes to geospatial standards, but right. every agency has their own services and processes and uh, that they deliver to New Yorkers, and creating those standards at the agency level for data collection upstream goes beyond the scope of the open data program, but completely agree that data standards is something that really helps on the usability front for the end user. All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Pernelis. Thank you, Councilmember Holden. Uh, you are joined by Councilmember Lander. And Councilmember, do you have questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, I apologize, I'm in a committee that was meeting across the street, uh, that one on freight. So between freight and open data, like two absolutely <laughs> fundamental and critical things that most New Yorkers are not as focused on. So I'm sorry that they conflicted today because I am very interested in both of them. So I haven't had time to read um, uh, the entirety of the testimony, but let me ask one or two um, questions. Um, you know, and it strikes me, I think having kind of the open data, you know, this hearing kind of focusing on both the, the broadest requirements of the open data law and the specific kind of strategic efforts of the Mayor's Office of Data, data Analytics is sort of instructive in thinking about there's a sort of a spectrum we have here. We want as much as possible to be as transparent and as open and as possible. And obviously, that is more than any finite set of people are going to be able to go and use for very focused and strategic purposes in making government work better. And part of what we want is an ecosystem that sort of balances that. So my first question comes, I guess, I see in the, um, in the open data law testimony a reference to the extra work you guys are doing on the 311 data calling it a, a high value data set. So I guess I wonder, as you're thinking about the data sets you have, and obviously the law says all of them have to be put out there in this way, but clearly some of them are really rich and important and the ones people want a lot, and then some of them are much beloved, very important data, but less likely maybe to get a lot of attention from the public. So do you have a, hierarchy of which data sets are you consider high value that get an extra deep dive to make sure the integrity is good, the updates are good, and, and if so, how are you determining? Well, let me, I guess, ask if you have it before I ask questions about it. Uh, so the short answer is yes. So with an inventory of more than 2,000 data assets, we do have to make sure that we're prioritizing in some way when we're thinking about what we're going to um, make sure is of high quality to the public. Now that being said, we work to make sure every asset put up on the platform you know, has to have a data dictionary. Um, if there's an address, needs to have the geospatial standards attached. Uh, but for example, one initiative that we did this summer was called Metadata for All. And we prioritized having the library science community review and assess the metadata for the top 100 most viewed data sets on the platform. And we were able to pull that information um, using some data we have from our uh, technology provider, Socrata, and we also use Google Analytics to be able to understand usage. So we are also a data-driven program in addition to being a program about data. 
and tell me a little more about you know about that usage, what that me you know what it is that you're looking at when you've chosen the hundred highest used or highest volume? Sure. So for that initiative specifically, we were looking at browser views. So how many people are just coming onto this data set and viewing it? And the difference there between well, browser views and broader views are um, API calls is a signal that machines are looking at the data. And when undergoing a usability initiative, we wanted to make sure we were understanding what are the most popular data sets that people are trying to use. Uh, so that's why we chose that metric as a way of figuring out, well, how do we make these data sets that are the ones that people are going to the most even more accessible by improving the metadata? And have you done some surveys of your users to try to understand what the using data using community is finding works, finds not works, might have suggestions for improvements? So uh, engagement with our users is really important to us, and we've gone about getting that feedback in a number of different ways. Uh, we did an audit of our help desk tool just this past summer to be able to understand where we could improve. We have quarterly events so that we're actually meeting people face to face and hearing what questions they have, what concerns they have. The help desk itself receives about 25 to 30 inquiries per week. So we have people flagging data errors, data questions for us, and we're getting back to them in a timely manner. Um, and we also uh, about about annually have been conducting kind of research about who our users are more broadly. So about two years ago, we conducted research with a local firm here in New York called Reboot that helped us develop user personas to understand that nonprofits use our data, students use our data. Because by design, the open data program is built such that we don't necessarily know who all of the people are who are coming and downloading data sets. Have you thought about kind of including a uh, an ask with every download, you know, take a three question survey, register with, uh, you know, any of the kinds of tools that interact when you, and you could say no, I just want my data, leave me alone, but Not you might be yet. willing to say, sure, I'll take your two question survey, or yes, I'd like to create a user profile for easier use next time. It's a good question. There are some data platforms out there that require you to sign in or require you to answer some questions before you can access the data. I don't want to require, but you know, there's require and there's offer. Yeah. Um, as of now, we've decided not to create that barrier of entry before getting to the data. Um, but it's something we can. And I agree with that. Future. I wouldn't want it to be a barrier to the data, but you know, that's that form when you're on hold of the thing, and they say after you get your customer service, would you take a two-question <laughs> survey? I, I imagine there would be a way that you could structure this that would not be a barrier to the data, and you could easily just click no, um, you know, or I don't know. It's, it's, it might be worth looking. At. It might give you some automated tools for understanding your user base better with in a way that wouldn't add a lot of staff time and it's a good idea so. yeah. um, all right and then my um, my other question um, and I got a chance to scan through the open open data uh, testimony more than I did the moda testimony but I um, so it may be that you um, answered this in your in your testimony but I, I, in the time that I've spent on the moda website I found um, some very good examples of uh, of Moda's strategic initiatives of like we had a problem we wanted to solve, we assembled a team, we looked at data, here's what we did. And that's a great way of working when City Hall wants a problem analyzed. We, we've talked with you guys, I know, about Vision Zero and how we get smarter in our enforcement. That's great. Um, they're also th the goal of working with our civic tech community so that, and then of course we just, we provide all the data and people can do whatever they want. And if they come up with great solutions, wonderful. There seems like there's a sort of middle ground, which is more problems to solve than the mayor's office of data analytics can solve, but with more focus than here's all the data we got. And whether that takes the form of, you know, whatever people are doing, structured hacks or particular competitions where here's a somewhat larger set of things we think could be improved we don't have the resources at Moda to like dig in on all of them. So what, and again, if I'm asking you to repeat stuff you said in the testimony, I apologize, but what are the ways in which you're trying to maximize what the broader community can do, you know, on things that are high enough a priority that we could name them and say, we think there's something here, if even if they're not quite high enough a priority given staff at Moda itself to make it a deep dive of yours. 
So I would say that uh, we've built strong relationships with the civic tech community in New York through Civic Hall, through Beta NYC, through others, um, and have a continued dialogue around you know, where there's interest from their side in addressing local problems. I do think there's opportunity to uh, scope more problems and to put that out to this group of talent and goodwill, uh, which we're very fortunate to have in the city. Um, I wouldn't, I, I would say that scoping robust projects that can then lead to a robust implementation pathway is not a small task to take on, but uh, there is opportunity there. And I guess this is exactly why I'm asking. I, I, my hunch is, given what you guys know from the projects you've done, you're in a stronger position than the agencies are to understand what a successful project would look like, um, but that if you had some initiative, some space, where you kind of helped folks do that, you know, you worked with agency CIOs, you helped them understand how to frame a question and what a real project would look like, that you'd be in a lot stronger position to kind of put that out into the world. Like, sometimes the agency might decide, you know what, that's so worth it, we're going to invest some money in it next year. You might decide it's worth it for you to to pick up, it's a high enough priority, but I could also see a little step on the ladder, which was, you know what, like that's well enough framed now, we could go out to the community, who knows, with a prize, with, you know, who knows what, the, you guys would have a better sense of what approach might be best, and that we could significantly increase the, um, the not, you know, not infinitely, you know, but I mean, how many projects can you guys do in a year with the staff? Yeah, well, I don't mean that critically, like, yeah. you can't do that many, can no, you? No, no, I mean, I, I think there are um, a lot of, there's a lot of, there are a lot of challenges to solve in New York City, and uh, there are 300,000 people who work for the city of New York, 8.5 million New Yorkers. If we can tap into their creativity to help solve problems, the city's going to be the better for it. I think that um, steps we have taken towards getting agencies to feel comfortable about how to problem solve with the public, especially using open data as that vehicle and that tool, is that this past uh, compliance cycle, we created a requirement where city agencies had to identify three civic engagement commitments that they were going to um, follow through on in the next year. Uh, and so it's a baby step. It's not, here's a problem, could you solve it? But already having an agency be proactive when they publish a data set, tweet about it, blog about it, don't just put it on the portal and hope someone's going to discover it, is a first step we're taking towards getting agencies to understand that beyond open data compliance, you're putting information out there, and this is information that the public could use to help you problem solve. So we're moving in that direction, and there definitely is opportunity there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we are joined by Council Member Eric. Yeah. Uh, so we have any more questions? Seeing no, fur uh, no further questions, I want to thank all the panelists coming here to testify. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you may step down, and we have the second panel from the public. Yeah. Uh, the second panel con uh, consists of uh, Dan uh, Daniel Allen on behalf of Manhattan Borough President and Lindsay Poira from Beta NYC and Alex Kamrade uh, from uh, VG Van Albany. Uh, Daniel, you can identify yourself and start now. Hi, I'm Daniel Allum. I'm the technology policy analyst for the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Thank you for having me. I'm going to present uh, Gail's testimony on her behalf. My name is Gail Brewer, and I'm the Manhattan Borough President. I want to thank Chairman Ku and the members of the Ch uh, Committee on Technology for holding this hearing. As you may know, I was the primary sponsor of Local Law 11 of 2012, the Open Data Law, um, excuse me, as a member of the City Council. Implementing the Open Data Law continues to be a major undertaking, and I would like to thank the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, Commissioner Saini, for, for his efforts. 
The excellent work for, of Do It, the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, and the Mayor's Office of Technology Innovation makes me confident that New York City will continue to lead the nation in municipal data initiatives. Open data has become very important for the city and our constituents. I fully support intro 1137, which will codify MODA into the city charter. It is a necessary step as we look to improve the institutional framework behind the open data portal. I am proud of our city's influential position in open data and the thriving civic hacker community that is leveraging the many opportunities created by transparency. I want to discuss the work of Beta NYC and how open data is revolutionizing the ways in which citizens and city government interact. Over the past few years, I have partnered with Noel Hidalgo and Beta NYC to run the Civic Innovation Lab, a program dedicated to improving community boards' use of data and technology while training the next generation of civic leaders in the CUNY Service Fellows Initiative. The program has been a huge success, providing community boards with useful to tools such as BoardStat, BoardTrack, and After Hours Variance Dashboard. Another such tool is SLAM, or the State Liquor Authority Mapper, which aggregates data on active liquor licenses, sidewalk cafe licenses, 311 complaints about bars, restaurants, clubs, and restaurant health inspections in NYC onto a single map. This tool saves community boards considerable time and resources when forming a resolution on a liquor license application or a sidewalk cafe application. Beta NYC has been instrumental in implementing these technologies, instructing community board members and staff in how to properly use them, and addressing tech capacity issues for all 12 community Manhattan community boards. The, the improvement in tech and data resources greatly helps community boards fulfill their responsibilities and contribute to government decision making. The more the city communicates through its data, the more everyone stands to gain. Accordingly, when data sets are updated with greater frequency, the data is more actionable. The open data law is an engine for economic development, and we're only beginning to see its full potential. In order to achieve that potential, we must make strides to integrate open data coordination with day-to-day -day operations in every agency. The current wait times for requested data sets are far too long due to the volume of requests as well as the manpower we currently have to meet them. Some of our partners have been told it will take at least two years to release requested data sets. In other instances, agencies have data available on their websites, which is not available on the open data portal or updated on a regular basis. Utilizing open data teams, composed in part by staff members involved in other agency operations, will create greater efficiency. Including staff members in the open data process will allow agencies to apply the expertise of city workers in determining useful data to release and will also provide context to data descriptions which only comes from years of experience. Providing open data coordinators with appropriate resources as they guide their agencies towards compliance ensures the city remains transparent and increases the open data portal's value. In March, the open data team partnered with Beta NYC, the Sunlight Foundation, and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services to host the first full day of training for NYC open data coordinators. While I applaud this step forward, I believe this training should not be limited to a one-time event. Rather, it should be available quarterly as we onboard new open data coordinators and expand to other agency staff members. The open data law has brought the civic hacker movement to the forefront of good government oversight. Open data has become more than just transparency. It makes government more accountable, serves as a teaching tool for undergraduates and a pipeline to good jobs, empower citizens and small biz businesses, and improve city services. There is much progress to make on this insight front, and I will do all I can to ensure the vision of 2012 continues to expand these initiatives and that New York City remains a national leader in municipal data innovation. Thank you. Next, Beta, Beta NYC. Chair Ku and members of the New York City Council Technology Committee. My name is Lindsay Poirier, and I'm the lab manager at Beta NYC, a civic technology organization with 4,000 plus members that have spent several years dedicated to conducting research, developing curriculum, and producing tools to support the equity, uh, the equity and accessibility of the city's open data resources. We work in partnership with the Manhattan Borough President Gail A. Brewer's office, uh, the CUNY Service Corps, and FCNY to improve digital and data literacy and train a new generation of civic technologists. Over the past several years, we have collaborated closely with MODA and with DOIT's Open Data Team, and we are grateful for the opportunity to work closely with Adrian Schmoker, 
MOTA's Director of Civic Engagement and Strategy to ensure that our shared goals of open data for all are achieved. We're in preliminary talks with MOTA to support each other's efforts around New York City School of Data and Open Data Week 2019, celebrating the sixth anniversary of the open data law. We look forward to working with the city's new chief analytics officer to continue pursuing this aim. For the past three years, Beta NYC has been conducting research into the information infrastructure supporting New York City community boards. More specifically, we have sought to understand how community boards are currently leveraging data resources as evidence to support their resolutions and for what use cases they would like to have better access to open data resources. Through this research, we've been able to design tools and curriculum that configure the city's open data resources into dashboards, maps, and visualizations that are much more accessible to the public than raw data sources. In October, we published two reports that outline our research into the information infrastructure supporting community boards, summarize our findings, and offer recommendations to community boards, civic technologists, city agency representatives, and elected officials. We've included an, an executive summary of these reports with our written testimony, and both can be downloaded in full from our website. Our testimony today is largely informed by this research. In regards to the proposed legislation, we are completely in support of Introduction uh, 1137. We wish for MOTA to be an independent agency, but are excited to see its powers written into the city charter. Explicitly, we're excited to see MOTA be a steward of an open uh, source analytics library that can increase visibility into how agencies develop and use algorithms. If properly implemented, this could help advance other initiatives we support, such as open algorithms. In terms of feedback on the 2018 Open Data for All report, uh, the report marks the hard work and dedication of the city's open data team and demonstrates that they are working towards making open data more useful and accessible to the public. Most, do, uh, most notably, the team has published 629 new data sets, bringing the total number of data sets on the portal to 2,154. We believe they should uh, have the proper resources to manage these data sets as the numbers continue to grow. The team has engaged 1,800 plus New Yorkers at events during Open Data Week 2018 and hosted three sold out events in 2018. This demonstrates their efforts to engage the public in topics related to open <coughs> data and advanced data literacy for all. And the team is working to identify, research, and highlight real world use cases for open data and to design projects around these use cases. This demonstrates their commitment to user centered design. Beta NYC believes that the implementation of the open data law could be strengthened in the following areas. Uh, number one, while 80% of data sets eligible for the geospatial standard have been geocoded, some critical data sets are not in compliance with Local Law 108 of 2015. Beta NYC understands that the city's open data team is working under incredible constraints. The team is currently managing over 2,000 data sets, each requiring regular quality assurance and documentation, and most requiring georeferencing all while both MOTA and DOIT have been operating without key leadership figures for several months to years. For many on this team, managing the city's data assets is just one component of their job description. Budgetary resources should be allocated to ensure that the open data team can prioritize performing quality assurance and getting the existing data assets in compliance with more recent addendums to the open data law. While 89% of data sets have data dictionaries, many are only sparsely documented making it not only difficult for the public to interpret what different categories mean, but also opening up the possibility that the public will interpret the data incorrectly and draw inappropriate conclusions. Beta NYC is in support of the Open Data Team's Metadata for All initiative, which has advocated for incorporating thick narrative description of the contents of each data set published on the Open Data Portal to its documentation. We believe this effort will require considerable time and resources, including meeting with the data pr producers for each data set at e each agency to document key terms and concepts and translating this subject matter expertise into terms the public can understand. The initiative should be funded adequately. Communi uh, number three, community boards have described wanting access to certain information that is currently not on the open data portal, either because no agency is collecting the data, for example, vacant storefronts, it is not in an accessible format, uh, for example, rent stabilized units, or it is not yet available on the portal. Beta NYC has submitted requests to the open data team for a few of these data sets. In one case, we learned that the data would not be published for a year and a half, and in another case, we learned that the data set had not yet been scheduled for release. We hope to start productive conversations on how we can ensure that data that currently exists and the community has deemed a priority can be published in a timely manner. Uh, number four. 
While agencies have committed to 230 plus forms of civic engagement around open data, we hope to see resources allocated to allow, to allow for more meaningful forms of engagement. Currently, five of 70 agencies have committed to hosting focus groups with users of the data. Four of 70 agencies have committed to producing tools and sharing them to the projects library. And one of 70 agencies has committed to producing curriculum on their data resources. User engagement is essential to ensure that the data is structured to meet diverse needs and that jargon is properly explained in data documentation. However, we also recognize that the open data coordinators are strapped for time and resources. To make broader civic engagement possible, we believe that every agency should have an open data team with diverse technical subject matter expertise and representing diverse offices within the agency that can collaborate to support data quality assurance, documentation, public engagement, and tool building. Funding should be allocated to support this. There should be more, uh, number five, there should be more opportunities for collaboration between open data coordinators at different agencies. Often the most important data insights do not emerge from analyzing and visualizing one data set uh, uh, produced by one agency, but instead by integrating data from multiple data sets. However, because the city's data resources are often produced in silos, it can be extremely difficult to configure multiple data sets into a single view. Each city agency has their own unique way of identifying businesses, restaurants, buildings, and lots, and when their data sets characterize these features, they typically only use their own standards of, identifica of identification to reference them. For example, Beta NYC has tried to design maps of potentially vacant storefronts throughout the city by integrating several data sets from DCP, DOHMH, DCA, and the State Division, Division of Licensing Services, reporting the location of commercial units and active business licenses. However, because businesses are referenced with a single set of identifiers in each data set reporting licenses, this has been close to impossible. Coordinating efforts across agencies could highlight opportunities to link information across data sets. Local law 250, uh, number six, local law 251 of 2017 required not only that DOIT review the technical standards manual every two years, but also that they establish a method through which the public can comment on it. There are many areas where technical standards can be improved. Agencies often geocode addresses differently, use different terms or naming conventions to refer to the same concept, or use different stylistic conventions for filling in standard data values. For example, in the 301 service request data set, the community board column is formatted 01 Manhattan, whereas in the DOB's building permit data sets, the community board column is formatted 101. While agencies understand these nuances, it can be very confusing for users who may draw their own conclusions for why words are classified differently or values are input differently in different data sets. In promoting interagency coordination around data quality and release efforts, DOIT could more readily identify mismatched schemas and stylistic conventions in the data sets and use this feedback to strengthen the technical standards manual in ways that make it possible to link data across data sets while also supporting the public in developing a civic vocabulary. We would like to work with DOIT to host events and solicit broad public feedback on the technical standards manual. And finally, number seven, we hope that future releases of the Open Data for All report can include a headcount of MODA, positions filled, positions available, and the annual budget. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, good good so afternoon, a, Chair. Main opening? Yeah, great. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Ku, members of the Technology Committee. Uh, my name is Alex Camarda. I'm the Senior Policy Advisor for Reinvent Albany. I'm not going to read my entire testimony. I'll just summarize key points from it. Um, first, we want to applaud the appointment of Kelly Jin as the new director of MODA. Uh, this was a hire that was long in the making, and so we're pleased that she's aboard. Uh, second, we want to support intro 1137, Council Member Adams' bill. Uh, we actually testified before the 2019 Charter Revision Commission for the codification of MODA in the Charter, and we're pleased to learn that the Council can do that on its own. So uh, we do echo the uh, suggestion by Do It and the administration that the bill should more fully include uh, their role in, in the process of making data available to the public. And then third, we did evaluate the Open Data 2018 annual report and have a number of uh, things that we'd like to highlight that we think are good developments and then also highlight some areas uh, that we think improvements can be made. So starting with the, um, the positives, um, we're very impressed that the uh, MODA team and DOIT were able to 
ensure a great deal of compliance with geocoding and also with uh, data dictionaries. There's a very high percentage of data sets that have both in the portal, and that's very encouraging to see. Um, we're thrilled by the, the community that Moda has built through the many open data events that it has. If you've ever been to an open data week event, uh, if you haven't been to one, I highly encourage you to go to one. You really see that there's many stakeholders that, that care about the open data portal and the data sets that are made available. Uh, I think some of the data that it's released in the report supports that. Uh, I think one statistic that hasn't been highlighted, there's actually one million unique users that uh, view six million pages of data from the open data portal in, in just in fiscal year 2018. So that really speaks to the, the use and interest in the data sets. Uh, city agencies have a, have a mixed record on compliance, but one thing that they have done well is they've actually put 1,627 data sets into the portal that were actually not in their annual plans. So we think that shows that they're thinking about putting data sets in the portal, and while they don't always stick to their plans, uh, they are actually organically putting data sets in the plan um, or in the portal that they didn't initi initially intend to. Um, we think the new civic engagements commitment, uh, commitments by city agencies is um, an encouraging step. Obviously, using the data is important. We can warehouse data in a portal, but if it's not being used, it really has no purpose. So the, the use of the data is much more important than just releasing the data. And I think the report speaks to that in highlighting the use cases up front. Uh, with regard to improvements, um, I think it was already highlighted by the chair and by Do It, um, some of the challenges around automation. We think automation is really important because then we, um, you know, the public will have the data in real time. And uh, as was said before uh, by the administration, then they don't have to spend as much time uh, reminding agencies to put updated data in the portal. So that's something we, re we deeply care about. We're encouraged to see that uh, more data sets are planned to be automated and hope that occurs. Um, I spoke about the agencies putting data sets in the portal that were not in their annual plans. Um, unfortunately, they're also not putting a lot of data in the, in the portal that is in their annual plans. Uh, by our count, only 42% of the data sets agencies promised to publish were actually released in five years. That could reflect shifting priorities, but we'd like them to, the agencies, to stick more closely to their plans. And, you know, it's great to release data not in your plan, but you should also release the data that is in your plan unless there's a really good reason not to. Um, we think some of the, I'm not sure this wasn't highlighted, but um, Moda actually creates data sets about the data sets. And we went through those. There were some inconsistencies that we saw, um, namely around compliance by the agencies that we think need to be reconciled. And then lastly, the question was raised, you know, which agencies are releasing many data sets to the portal or doing a good job with open data versus others that may need improvement? So we went through the data sets provided by Moda, and that's actually the last several pages of our testimony, beginning on page four. You can see the agencies are ranked by most data sets released to the portal. Uh, obviously, that's only one indicator. If, you, if an agency releases many data sets to the portal, it doesn't necessarily mean they're high value data sets, but the Department of Education is by far and away the leader, having published 563 data sets. Do it as you might expect. The second is 157. Um, there are several big agencies that have released, you know, 100 data sets or more, or tens of data sets. There are many others that have released under 20, even under 10 data sets. Uh, one that stood out to us, the CCRB has actually released 120 data sets. It's a pretty small agency, yet the NYPD has only released 14. So that's one that we think should be uh, looked at more closely. Thank you, and I welcome any questions you may have. Scheduled for 
Um, well, some of the data sets that uh, they would like to have access to are, just don't exist throughout the city at all. So, for example, there are, there are no data sets characterizing the number of state vacant storefronts throughout the city. Um, so that's not on the portal because it just doesn't exist yet. Um, in addition to that, there's a number of data sets that aren't on the data portal because they're in a PDF format. Um, so a, an example of this would be uh, rent-stabilized units, which is managed by the Rent Guidelines Board. Um, there are, are a number of other data sets that have come up through our research, um, data sets from DOT and DOB um, that, that community boards have specifically reached out to us to ask to have available on the portal um, that have been a little bit slower to, to uh, be scheduled for release. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Landy, you have a question? Thank you, yeah. Um, Alex, thanks to all of you for your testimony and your leadership on the issue for sure. Um, uh, on your final point, Alex, about uh, agency differentials and particularly something like the NYPD where obviously they've got a massive amount of data, so to have only released 14 data sets um, uh, raises questions. Um, but there's no denominator, I guess it's challenging because there's not a denominator, right? So one suspects that's a bad grade because it's out of a whole bunch that should be there. But I guess currently the agencies get to decide what, I guess this is my question, like, you know, how, how do we evaluate better? Like, how do we know what right. we suspect that CCRB is doing a good job leaning into open data and the NYPD is doing a bad job hoarding their data? Like, how, how can we tell that from this report? If not, do we need changes to the law that would, uh, you know, for when we do, um, evaluation of minority and women-owned businesses, right? We're evaluating out of like total number of dollars contracted. So how, how do we how So do we it's, get it's an important here? question. Uh, you know, when the law was originally written, the agencies had to do an inventory by the end of this year. Uh, that was updated in amendments by the council that made it more of an annual process. And I think that recognized that the inventory of city agencies is always changing as to how many data sets they're going to have. So it's actually hard to get the denominator you spoke of. Um, but also they get to do it themselves? Is they, that yeah, right? this is something so they that they decide, they're determining. Oh, that's not a data set that yeah, I, you the know, I, I think calls for. Who's auditing that call that, that, you know, are they the umpire as well as the producer? Right. Uh, I mean, I think our suggestion would be and I, I think the council can play a pivotal role in this during the, the budget hearings. Obviously, there's many questions uh, for the agencies that come forth about their operations and their financial needs. I think integrating into the council hearings, asking about data sets and what have you released and what's a high value data set and what do stakeholders want to see in terms of the information that agencies make available. I think if that's ingrained in the process, that that would be a good way to at least identify which data sets agencies have and which are of most interest to the public and to the and to the council. I think if that's done on an annual basis, uh, we'll see more of a prioritization by the agencies. I mean, I can tell you just having done it, if you go on the website of almost any agency, there's usually data sets you can identify that they've made available to the public, seemingly important, um, but yet have not put all of those in the portal necessarily. And I think it's just probably competing priorities. They're focused on their operational functions. But uh, I think to the extent that council and others highlight that, it, it will happen more frequently. So I'll take your, you know, your suggestion and try to incorporate that into some of my budget questions in the way that you know, members do around um, diversity among senior staff and a range of other questions. But uh, maybe I'll offer a suggestion back as well because it seems to me that one very valuable role for the civic tech and advocacy communities might be to work with advocacy partners who care about the issues and might not know that, you know, it's, it's, it's I suspect that the advocacy groups that think about policing um, wouldn't be surprised by the statistics you gave, but probably you're not paying that much attention to it and that there might be some opportunities for partnerships for advocacy linking you and, you know, uh, subject matter advocates that might help drive some change here in ways that we could be partners in as well, but, but would be driven well from advocates on the outside. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Uh, seeing no more, uh, no more questions, uh, you can step down. And thank you for your participation. Thanks. Uh, any more public participations? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.